this video, we're going to create a query in Google Sheets that includes a field in the output of that query that has custom groupings. So what you see here is the finished product of what we're going to build today. To the left, I have a data set of past due clients. One of the fields is days past due. To the right, we have the query we're going to create. And you can see the second column here has custom days delinquent groupings based on this past due field in our data set. So I have groupings from 0 to 89 days delinquent, 90 to 179, and then 180 days plus delinquent. So we're going to begin with our query function and the first argument is where we select the data set we want to query off of and this is actually also where we're going to define our buckets we're going to create our delinquency buckets in this first argument and the way we need to do that is to isolate column b from the other columns in our data set and perform if statement if conditions on that column so what we need to do here is begin our first argument with an opening curly bracket because curly brackets allow you to join isolated or separated ranges back together in any order you specify so our first column we want to select column a as it is add a comma and that will join it to our next column, which is going to be column B. But we have conditions uh, we want to test on column B. So we need to insert some functions. The first function we're going to add, though, is the array formula. And the reason we need that is the query function is an array output. And the array formula converts non-array functions to array outputs and the ifs function does not produce an array output so that's why we need to nest it in the array formula so we we're using the ifs function to test multiple things and it will just perform multiple tests and return a value that you specify based on the first match that it finds so what we want to test is the output of the in between function and that does exactly what you think it would it just tests to see if a value falls between a low end and a high end so what we want to test is column b and for our first test we want to see if it falls between 0 and 89 so the is between will return a value of true if that test is met. So now we're back into our ifs condition and we want to specify what we want to return if this first condition is met. Well, we want to return the text 0 to 89. Now we're going to have more tests after this. So what I'm going to do is just copy what we've already created and alter it. So we have our second test. This time we want to see if it's between 90 and 179. If so, we want to return 90 and 179. And then we have our third bucket, which is 180 or higher. So for the high end, of our is between I'm just gonna list some really large number so that it captures everything that is greater than or equal to 180 and our output for that condition is 180 plus now we have one final if condition we want to test and this is really to address our header because our header value in column B does not match any of these 
conditions. So if we left this as is, it would just return NA for our header, and we don't want that. So I'm going to reference column B. And we want to see if any value is equal to our days past due header value. If it is, we just want to create a new header. We'll just call this delinquency bucket. So now we're done with everything we want to do to column B to create our buckets. So we need to add closing parentheses. And you can see I add one here and it shows what that aligns with, which is our first is between. So it looks like we need to add one more. So I'm going to add a comma here and now we can join this to column C. So we have our first argument for our query statement. So I'm going to close this out with a closing curly bracket so don't forget that so now we come into our select statement so for now i'm just going to say select star now i am going to add a where condition because we reference the entire column b in you know column b column a column c in our first argument and we don't want to return blank rows so I'm just going to add a where condition. And since we created our own custom arrays in the first argument, you can no longer refer to the column letter. You have to refer to the column number. So I know there's always going to be something in column one. So I'm going to say where column one is not null. Finally, we have the number of row headers we have in our data set, which is one. So you can see this produces our buckets with our custom header. And we can do, you know, different things. Now, if I only wanted to see anything that was in that last bucket, I can simply reference our column two and specify that custom bucket that we created 180 plus and there it is we can also sum on these different bucket amounts I could sum the total amount past due so if we change this this time we want to select column two and sum on column three and after our where condition we need to use the keyword group by to group on anything that's not being aggregated here which would be column two and there it is that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.